page six now, the fight for Israel abroad and right here at home. In a move that overturns decades of U.S. policy, on Thursday, the president said it's time to recognize Israel's sovereignty over the occupied Golan Heights. The president said the plateau was, quote, of critical strategy and importance to the state of Israel and regional stability. Israel captured that territory from Syria in 1967 and annexed it in 1981, a move that's not necessarily recognized internationally. But sometimes support from the U.S. is all you need. The reason why that land is so important today is because Israel claims Iranian troops are marching closer to the country's border from Syria, and the buffer zone remains just important now as it was in 1967. Joining me now to help analyze the recent debates surrounding Israel, the founder of the American Truth Project and Daily Ledger contributor, Barry Newsbaum. Barry, thank you for joining us tonight. So th this is a decision that is getting mixed reviews internationally, but praise from Israel. What can you tell us about that? Well, this decision by President Trump is a gift to Israel of major proportions uh, diplomatically. As uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, said, it's a wonderful present on Purim, and it's the third big President uh, Trump present to the state of Israel. Uh, first, uh, there was the move uh, to relocate the embassy, uh, to recognize the fact that Israel had been in Jerusalem for 3,000 years. Uh, then there was the abrogation of the Iran nuclear deal, which uh, literally could destroy Israel because it gave a path to the bomb to Iran. And now uh, the third big present is Israel is now recognized as the sovereign, at least by the United States, over the Golan Heights. The truth is, Alex, uh, it has been in Israeli control for 50 some years, uh, much longer than it was under Syrian control. And as someone who has been all over that territory, including right to the Syrian fence where I filmed uh, a number of shots last year, right across the fence, you can see the UN right next to Hezbollah and right next to Al Qaeda. In other words, the UN is doing nothing and Iranian-backed Hezbollah troops are all over the Golan on what now is the Syrian side of the line. Were Israel to give back that territory, it would be suicidal. Right. Because when you stand on the Golan and you look down on Israel, it is literally straight downhill. And what Syria used to do for decades is lob grenades and rockets and rifle fire at the farmers in the valley below. Now, with Israel keeping it permanently, that can't happen. And I think it's important to, I've been there as well too, and I, when I was there in 2015, you could literally hear rocket fire going off in the distance because of the civil war in Syria. So it's not necessarily only the Iranian threat, but it's also the idea that Syria just isn't a stable region at the time. And so you see the president taking these actions, such as supporting Israel, the, all the things that you just named right then, and then you see Democrats, on the other hand, right now, they're boycotting APAC. We've seen Senator Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders come out saying that they won't uh, be part of APAC any longer and go to that speech. What does this tell you about the direction of the two parties and where they're going in regard to Israel? <laughs> it's a perfect question right now, given the political scene and the start for the 2020 race for the White House. The Democratic Party at least in terms of the major players who are running for president, at least the nomination for the president in the Democratic side of the ticket, are knocking themselves out on a rush to the left. These are all benefactors of moveon.org, the uh, founded organization by George Soros, who hates Israel, who is pro-Islamic and wants very much to be in control of some sort of one world theocracy or whatever he wants to call it, his open border society. Anyone that believes in the American-Israel relationship becomes an enemy of move on. So everybody that wants his money, which are all the politicians, at least in the lead so far on the Democratic side that are running, are knocking themselves out to move so far left to change American foreign policy dramatically. Keep in mind, Alex, Israel is our best friend, our best ally. They are the front lines against terror and they are our best intelligence ally. They are the only free country in the Middle East and yet all the people you've named 
aren't showing up in APAC because God forbid they would show any support for the American-Israel relationship. Clearly, the swing to the left is now a race to the left. And I think it's important to bring up too, is reports today are showing that Hillary Clinton was seeking a back channel with Israel in hopes of unifying the two to coordinate efforts. So just think that the Democrat Party's focus just a couple of years ago was to support Israel in any way possible shows how far they've come now where you can't even get uh, Democrat candidates for president to come out to APAC and see a speaker. So it's gonna be really telling to see where this is in 2020 especially. But Barry, thank you very much for joining us tonight.